Hey everybody and welcome to another episode from HolsingersFlyShop.com. I'm your host Sean Holsinger. Today I'm going to be tying a bugger pattern for you. This is a really cool pattern that I had a lot of success on the water with yesterday. Um, I told you a while back on my jig video with the stone fly how um, Joe from Firehole Hooks sent me some hooks to try out. There's the new jig hooks. It's the 523s and uh, it's an extended length hook jig hook and it's worked real well for me um the only thing like i said in my other video i'm i wish the hook gap was a little bit wider but i caught a lot of fish on it yesterday i had this pattern out i hadn't got to fish it i tied it over the winter as soon as joe gave me the hooks to try and uh, i really liked the looks of it when i tied it so i was couldn't wait to get on the water and yesterday it was just the right conditions i thought I should have been throwing some wooly buggers and it paid off for me. I had some clients out and we caught some nice fish on it actually. Uh, I caught a really nice wild brown probably close to 15 inches on this pattern. Anyhow, it's not hard to tie and it's a different twist on a wooly bugger. Uh, of course it's on a jig hook too which is a different twist and helps it ride upside down, keep the hook point up and uh, keeps you from getting snagged up a lot extra. So give this want to try it's a it's a different twist you're going to just use dubbing on it instead of hackle and chenille like you're used to on a bugger but this is a great leech pattern uh i tie it in brown it looks great for a crayfish too so we caught a lot of fish on browns and blacks and i tie it in a couple other colors actually the way i found out about it was a, a different pattern and uh, that's worked really well for me in a different color and I kind of put a twist on it and did it in these colors and boy they worked real well so give this fly a try you're gonna catch fish on it here's a picture of it in the material list and let's get started tying Okay, here you see the fly in the vise. It's a really cool fly. Um, may not be into making dubbing loops and it's something you need to learn. So we'll get into showing that a little bit today too. So this is a really good fly to fish. I've had success with it and really like it. Let's get into tying it. Okay, there you see the fly and it's not too hard. We're going to put the hook in. The hook is the new Firehole 523 in a size 10 and tie it in a size 10 or a size 8 if you want or even down to a size 12 whatever size you want and what we're going to do is we're going to start some pink thread on there and I'm using pink thread simply because I want a hot spot at the end and it's going to be in the dubbing loop so you're not really going to see it through the dubbing next thing I'm going to put on is a little bit of marabou I'm using like one feather here and I'm tying that down and I'm getting the length of what would be a normal hook length, I guess you would say, for the length of the tail. I do not want a big, huge tail because the one thing I don't want to happen is short strikes. Um, short strikes is where the fish will come on, grab onto the tail, and never get it into the hook. We don't want that to happen, so I don't want to put a, a long tail on it. Next thing I'm going to use is some crystal flats. Or, yeah, some crystal flash, and uh, just whatever color you have handy, that's not a big deal. You just want a little bit of flash in the back of the tail. And I'm going to take two strands of it, tie it on on the side. I always start on the side closest to me because that's where I can see it easy. And then I'll flip it around to the other side and tie it straight off the other side. Then I'll come in and snip at the length of my tail. There you go, you see you have two little pieces of crystal flash. Just enough to give the tail just a little bit of flash. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take and put a little bit of extra lead. The bead I should add on here, the bead is a 3.8 millimeter slotted tungsten in a copper. And I'm going to put an extra little bit of lead for extra weight and also to keep that bead in place that's the big reason why I put the lead on there I like to take the lead 
and slide it up in the back end of the bead and as you see now that bead does not move it doesn't twist around there so that kind of locks it in place and we're going to cover up it with thread just to make sure it doesn't move and covers it and then I'm going to try here to blend the body in together and smooth out the distance from where I cut that marabou tail off okay once I got that smoothed out there a little better I'm going to do the last step, which is make a dubbing loop. Now to make my dubbing loop, I'm going to pull out the thread here. I'm going to use my dubbing loop twister tool. And uh, this is a big one. There's different ones you can use. This is the one that I use. And it's got a thing that rotates. You spin it in your finger here. It's pretty easy to use. You can get a nice grip on it spin it with your thumb. That's one of the reasons why I like it. So you're just going to put this... I'm going to get her down here where you can see it in the camera. You're going to slip it in one side, flip it over and slip it in the other side so you got a good grip on it. Then I'm going to drop it down. You can see in my other camera view here. I'm going to drop it down and I'm going to make a big loop with this. And then we're going to wrap it back onto the, back onto the hook here. And then once I get it wrapped around, I'm going to make one wrap around it to bring those thread ends closest to my hook there. Bring that together. And then I'm going to just bring this up to the bead. Now, next, I want to use, this is a black one I'm tying. So I'm going to use some dark stone SLF. This is dubbing blends num from the dubbing blends number two box. But you can also get it. It's d dark stone is the color. I'm just going to pull some of this out. <coughs> And what I'm going to do, is you see I pulled a big clump of it out. Well, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to separate it. And I'm going to try to thin it out, and get the fibers in a line. Okay, you'll see here what I mean by that. I tried to line up the fibers, and get them spread out and, and thin, so I can put it in between my dubbing loop. Now this is a pretty long hook, so I'm going to have to do probably twice on this. So I'm just going to take my finger, and I'm going to put my finger in between that loop, if I can get it there, there we go, to spread it out a little bit. And then I'm going to put that dubbing up as close as I can to the hook. And then I'll let my finger out to hold that in place. And there you can see, try to get it centered like that. Okay, now I'm going to do that again and I'm going to put more dubbing material in that loop because that's not going to be enough to get me up that long hook so I'm just going to peel out my fibers <coughs> okay, try to make a, a nice long flat piece with it that I can put in between that loop again okay slide it in that loop and we'll try starting with this. Then you're just going to pull tension on that so it locks it all in place. You can see how I got a nice brush of it here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my finger up above the dubbing, between the dubbing and the dubbing loop tool. And I'm going to use that and I'm going to twist down here on the bottom with my thumb. And then when I let go it's going to all spin out and make a nice dubbing loop here. Okay, now if I do this too much, the thread will break, so I kind of have to be careful a little bit. Next thing I'm going to do is take my dubbing brush, <coughs> just pick out a little bit of the extra fibers here. There we go. That looks good. Now we're going to peel these fibers back, kind of like a hackle, and we're going to palmer this up. By doing it this way, we don't need to use the hackle like you do on a normal woolly bugger with chenille and then the hackle because we're going to brush this out and all these fibers are going to stand out going to make it really buggy <coughs> wrapping this tight keeping it t keeping it together but giving it enough room that I can get it wrapped up there and you can see I'm not showing any of that pink thread on the bottom through and I just keep 
teasing these fibers back so I don't trap them on my next wrap. I want this to be as buggy as I can. And it looks like I'm going to end up just a hair short on this and I'm going to have to do another loop and that's no problem. Okay. So, you see I ended up just a hair shy. So we're just going to tie this off. And we're going to come back in and we're going to do a really short loop. So same thing over again. Put our dumbing tool in. I'm going to make a smaller loop this time. Because I don't need as much. Just going to pick out a little bit of dubbing. Need just a hair more than that. There we go. Put it in my tool. And then when you pinch down on it, you want to slide it right up to the end there. And you want to try to make sure that your thread is in the middle of all your fibers. And then we're just going to twist it up again. Again, using my fingers between my tool and the dubbing. And when it starts to roll like that, let go and it'll finish rolling itself out. And then I'm just going to pick out the loose couple ones there. And then run this right up there behind the bead. Now like I said, I used the pink thread so I can make a nice little hot spot color on here. So I'm going to make about three wraps, wrap that down. Trim that off. And I'm going to wet finish. Okay, simple fly to tie. Might take a little practice if you've never done the dubbing loop before. Now I'm just going to take my dubbing brush and just brush this out. Try to get those fibers, get it nice and buggy. There you can see it's really nice and buggy. Be careful when you use a dubbing brush like this that you don't hit your hot spot because they'll all fray. But otherwise, there you go. There's how it's going to ride in the water. It's a great looking fly and it's a fish catching fly. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, I had a great day on the water with this fly. I tied in a couple different colors. I caught a caught fish one with both black and brown. And I tied this similarly before I had the hooks. I tied this in a different color that I caught a lot of fish on too. So play with your colors. Use the olives if you want to, if you like to use an olive bugger. Just play with your colors. That SLF Prism blends. You know, I can't say enough about this. The dubbing blends from Whitlock's. I love this stuff. It has a little bit of flash, a lot of squirrel, and it's just really buggy. You can see it in this fly. Um, like always, guys, the stuff you need to tie it, you can find it at our shop at wholesingersflyshop.com. Please check out our social media sites like Facebook and Instagram. Give us a like there. And... Uh, you can find me if you have any questions for me. You need to reach out to me and ask me any kind of questions about tying or, you know, something that you want to know about or to request a video. Hit me up at wholesingersflyshop at gmail.com. I'll try to get back to you right away. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. I love bringing them to you, and I'm thankful that you guys watch them. Until next time, guys, I'm Sean Holsinger.